everyone. I'm back. It's Joanne from HPA. I'm so excited for our second uh, version of Tough Questions. Um, today we have a UC Davis alum and a dear friend of mine, Shelby Prasad. She is currently a second year podiatric medical student at Samuel Merritt University in Oakland. And she's going to talk to us today about um, her path in podiatric medicine. So welcome, Shelby. Thanks for joining us. Hi. So, so yeah, can you tell us a little bit, of, a little bit about your pre-med journey? Yeah. So it began, I knew I wanted to go into, into medicine and I knew I wanted to be some sort of doctor and help people. Right. So, so that's the typical thing. And I definitely wanted to go down that route, but I didn't know how to do it. And I didn't know what to do. Um, I am a first gen student. I didn't know anyone who, who's gone down this path or anyone who's even gone to college. So a lot of me being in Davis was just trying to figure out what to do and what everyone else was doing um, until I kind of went to HPA and met Joanne and then I realized there's more than one way. I thought there was only the MD route and then I learned about the DO route and then it wasn't until I, I took my gap year um, that I was exposed more to DPM. So that's kind of how I found out about it. And once I found out about it and I started shadowing, that's when I really know, knew and found out that this is a career for me. And in between, I definitely had a lot of shadowing opportunities. I did the student run clinics, I did HRIs and I shadowed here and there. And so I think I got a good sense of what it was that I wanted in my career. And once I found out all the things that a DPM can do, I realized that, okay, this is definitely the right fit for me. I don't think a lot of people know about podiatric medicine. I don't think a lot of students at Davis know what a DPM is. Can you give us sort of like an overview of what that career is about? Yeah, for sure. So DPM stands for Doctor of Podiatric Medicine. So we go to our own medical school. So there's MDs, there's DOs, and then there's DPMs. So there's about nine, there's nine podiatric medical schools across the United States. And there's actually one more being made in Texas. Um, as far as the curriculum goes, it's the same. It's still four years of med school. Um, you still need to take the MCAT. You definitely should shadow a DPM. You do need to have experiences that show kind of why you're interested in medicine because either way, um, you're a doctor. The main difference is that you're already going into your specialty. So MDs and DOs, they don't find out their specialty until they take their step one and um, then they do their rotations and then residency is when they really start to specialize. The difference with DPM is you already know what your specialty is. So our scope of practice is the foot and ankle and we focus more specifically on the lower extremity, lower half of the body. And we get that training from day one. So I'm a, I just finished my second year, but in these two years, we've already started learning how to read radiographs. We've already started going into clinic and, and treating patients and learning about podiatric medicine and learning about podiatric surgery. And we do still have residency. So we go through four years of med school. We do have clinical rotations, but rotations that are pertinent to our scope of practice. And then our residency is three years. And then there's an optional fellowship that you can do that lasts about a year. Um, so I'd say that's like the main difference. But as far as what we have to learn, we're still a physician. We're all also um, trained to become board certified surgeons. Um, whether you choose to sit for those boards and practice in surgery every day, that's up to you. But it's a way that if you want to do surgery, which I do, you are guaranteed surgery. So, so what has is, what is podiatric medical school been like so far? Can you tell us about the curriculum? Yeah, so um, I'm not going to lie. I thought it was going to be a little bit easier than MD and DO because I was like, oh, we have our scope of practice. It's going to be pretty narrowed down. Um, I can say I was pleasantly surprised. Um, so we definitely go through a lot. So because we already know our specialty, we also need to learn everything that a general medicine doctor would need to know. And we need to know our scope of practice. So on top of human anatomy, we also took lower extremity anatomy. In addition to general medicine, we also took podiatric medicine and podiatric surgery. So that was kind of what our, our first year, our first two years were like. Um, 
our first year was mostly like basic science course coursework. So biochem came back, physio came back. We took uh, histology. I hadn't taken that before. Um, there's microbiology, there's immunology. So all of those things. And then second year, we started to dive deeper into what we're going to be doing as doctors. So pharmacology, surgery, radiology, things like that. Um, and then something else that's specific to CSPM is second year, we also started clinical rotations. So once first year was kind of done um, and I got a handle on that, I did take two gap years. So um, definitely recommend that, but um, it was an adjustment starting, uh, starting school. So first year, first semester was, was a little bit of an adjustment, but then you kind of get ease into it and you figure it out. Um, and that was, that was okay. So first year finished, and then we started second year. And second year, we would have clinic two days a week, Mondays and Fridays, and then class Tuesday through Thursday. So it's definitely not a walk in the park, but it's a lot of fun because it's hands-on. So whatever you're seeing in clinic or learning in class, it kind of interrelates and it's cool to kind of see that and apply that. Cool, that sounds fun, um, but hard. I'm sure it was very hard adjusting to the first year. So you're getting ready to study for your boards right now. What's the name of your boards again? Yeah, so um, we're getting ready right now to study for our APMLE boards part one. Um, it's it's kind of like equivalent of um, the the step one that um, that the USMLE uh, that the MDs and DOs take for the USMLE. Okay. So after you finish your fourth year, you graduate, you do a three-year residency. Are you planning on doing a fellowship? Um, I don't know. We'll see. So a fellowship is whatever you decide to specialize in. Um, and I feel like right now, there's so many things out there. Um, so yeah, we do know our scope of practice, but within podiatric medicine, there's different specialties like sports medicine and, you know, ankle surgery or dermatology or wound care. So I think I still don't know where it is that that I like would want to be. So I don't know yet. Um, we'll see. They don't know where you might be in 10 years from now, but definitely practicing. Definitely practicing. I'm not sure if I want to be in a group, not sure if I want to do private practice. Um, I think there's just so many options out there um, that I'll probably like third and fourth year, I'll get a better better handle on it. And they say residency is when you really figure out where your niche is and what it is that you want to do. So, so we'll see, keeping an open mind. I do know I want to do something in legislation. So okay, and I kind of keep that in the back of my mind and, and be involved in that. But yeah, we'll see. Nice. Do you think that you'll experience any limitations in your career having chosen this path? I don't think so. Um, not that I'm seeing. I see a lot of interprofessional work going on. Um, even when we're in clinic right now, uh, we work with orthopedics, we work with anesthesia, we work with, um, you know, the PAs and NPs. I don't see anything, um, any sort of limitation in that sense. I do think that there's a lack of women in the field. Um, so I think that's just something that that's going to come with the job. Um, and hopefully that, that changes. Um, but but yeah, I think as far as like scope of practice or, or respect, I think at some point that was something that I was concerned about. Am I going to be looked down upon because I'm a DPM and I'm not an MD or I'm not a DO? And I think that stigma was there um, at some point. But now um, I've been going to a lot of conferences and I haven't seen any of that. There's actually, um, if anything, there's more camaraderie between all three because there's such a need for doctors out there. So instead of, you know, trying to take all the ankle cases and bunion cases, they're more like, all right, here's a trauma case on this. Like you guys deal with this. I'm going to go focus on, I don't know, like the arm or the shoulder. Yeah. So I don't think I'm going to get any limitations, but I think it varies state to state and maybe my answer is going to be different later, but that's well, hopefully how not. It sounds Sounds like you've been exposed and you're learning a lot about the career and it, it, I hope I hope you don't have any limitations. I'm glad you feel that way. So I know a lot of people might not know this has been a couple of years, but you used to actually be a pre-health advisor 
at HPA. You did that for a couple of years before you went to medical school. So you're pretty good at giving advice. Uh, what advice would you give to a first or second year pre-health student right now who is either exploring or is a pre-med and, and you know just going down that path? What could you give them for advice? I would say to slow down. That's what I wish someone told me. Slow down, don't compare yourself to other people, and just really figure out what it is that you want. So focus on school, make sure that your grades are fine. Find maybe like one thing that keeps you motivated. I'm not gonna say don't join anything because I'd probably go crazy. Um, I need that right now in school. So while you're going to school, have like one thing that gets you interested in going to school. Cause I know I'd sit in class and I'd be like, oh my God, why, why am I learning organic chemistry? Like what's the point in all of this, right? So find something that motivates you, find something that gets you going. Um, but yeah, slow down and, and plan it out. I would just be like, come up with a four-year plan, figure out what classes you want to take, make sure your grades are, are staying high, as high as they can. And then as far as experiences go, I would say shadow. Um, shadow and really figure, it out, figure out what it is that you want to do and take those gap years if you need it. I'm so thankful that I had those gap years because if I didn't, I feel like I would have gotten burnt out really fast. Um, and ga that gap year was really when I figured out what it was that I wanted to do. So like I did scribing, I did substitute teaching, I worked at HPA. I mean, that was, that was how I really figured out what I wanted to do. Because when I was scribing in the ER, I thought, okay, I wanna be an ER doc, I like this fast pace. And then the types of patients I saw, I was like, mm, I don't know. I don't know if this is a good fit. When I saw what they did, I was like, oh, I don't know if that's what I see myself doing. And then once I started shadowing a local podiatrist, that's when I was like, okay, they're going in there one with one patient, they're giving an injection. With another patient, they're over here cleaning up their wounds. Another patient, they're taking them to surgery. Oh, look, here's a follow-up patient that they just saw from surgery. I think like the more you expose yourself to the things that are out there and not rush, you're gonna be better equipped for a career that you're interested in. Um, and I think everything falls into place and everything happens for a reason. So if things don't go exactly the way you planned, it's all good. Just take it slow, take it easy, and it'll all be fine. <laughs> awesome. I did think of another tough question for you. Uh, are there any opportunities to do research in podiatric medicine and have you done that? Yeah, so, I'm going to say that this is like, the more I'm in the field, the more I realize there's just so much to do in this field. So like Joanne said, a lot of people don't know about this field. Um, so there's a lot of room and for growth. Um, so outreach and letting people know about this profession in general. And that also comes with research. So there's actually a lot of research opportunities in the field, and I have participated in it. Um, so every school kind of has their own student run journal. Um, so I've done like literature reviews um, for my school uh, paper. And then at CSPM, we also have a motion analysis research center. So it's a little bit different. What this research center is, is it focuses on the biomechanics and biomechanics is like how your body works and the impact of that. So I'm participating in a study um, where we're looking at the ACL and, um, and impact sports. So if you're interested in sports medicine, this might be a career that, that might be fun for you. Um, but the research is a little bit different. So it's not like the research that you think of that, that we kind of are exposed to at Davis. So I did like a lot of wet lab research and work with mice and did neuroscience stuff in undergrad. This is very different than that. It's more clinical research. Um, but it's more applicable to the field. And so, yeah, I mean, short answer, there's lots of opportunities for research in the field. Um, and it's a growing field. So there's so many questions that haven't been answered yet. There's so much more new technology that's being developed and a need for things to be developed. So because it's such a small field, it's a really easy way to get your name out there and do something new and do something to better the field. Um, so yeah, I think that's a huge, huge untapped um, avenue when it comes to podiatric medicine and research. Awesome. 
Well, Shelby, I have, um, I don't have any other questions for you. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us? Um, no, I think, I think my biggest thing is if you're interested in something, definitely go for it and, and shadow. Um, if you're interested more in podiatric medicine, I have an Instagram page that I run with a couple other classmates. It's called uh, PodMed Adventures. So definitely give us a follow. Um, if you want to see what it is that we do with our student life, what classes we take, a lot of questions that I think I had when I first was exposed to this career field. So feel free to ask any questions on there. Um, I know there's been a couple of Davis alum that have reached out um, if you need help with like applications or personal statements. I mean, we're a very small community and we're all here to help each other become the best doctors that we can be. So um, yeah, I think that's my... It looks awesome. I've been following it. <laughs> Thank it's you. a lot of fun. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy med school life and talking with us this morning. Um, I hope you do really well on the boards. I can't wait to hear all about your next step in med school. And soon enough, you'll be a DPM and out there practicing. That'll be really exciting. Yeah. So have a great day and we'll talk again soon. All right, bye.